Hey, welcome back to Real Talk. Thanks for hanging out with us. He's Joe, I'm Brad. Last episode before the summer. Summer? We gotta eat we all go. the nuts because they're gonna be stale by the time we come back. So yeah. just dig I in. That does something to our colon or bowels. <laughs> it wouldn't like, be good? I just don't think, it would, no, it would not be good. Okay. No, that's not the way to enter summer. Okay. There's different ways. Like we could tear off our shirts. <laughs> we wore basically the same shirt today. If Thank I you. tear off my blouse and expose myself to the camera, that would be <laughs> We almost made it. Posed myself to the camera. That would. <laughs> we almost made it four seasons without the dinosaur. I think the Lord was trying to keep me from saying what I was going to say <laughs> next about tearing off my blouse. He, he, he was the dinosaur. Oh, no, he lost a horn. Well, at least he's not. He's less horny. Maybe more. <laughs> 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 I actually, can't believe I didn't see that coming. I did not see I that coming. I served that up like a softball. <laughs> I didn't see it you coming. didn't react, so then I knew. <laughs> you had to. I had to. Okay. <clears throat> what are we talking about today? All right, last one the before summer. the summer. Here we go. We're talking about another sort of cultural topic. We hit deconstruction a few weeks ago. You know, Cancel words culture. have multiple meanings. They do have multiple meanings. <laughs> so. So the one we're talking about today is woke. <laughs> we are talking about woke. What is wokeness, right? What is Not wokeness? Not what time did you get up this morning? What time did you get up this morning? I got up at 6.06. That's sleeping in for you. I know, I was up late actually. How did you guess it? Wow. Night? I was awoken <laughs> at 6.06. <laughs> okay. Because I don't set an alarm. But you don't need to. No, I just wake up. Just so sleeping in at 6.06 is probably bomb. the longest I've slept for a long time. That's late. That's weird. Well, I woke up. I, I was woke. Okay. All right. What so, a weird word. So yeah, yeah. So interesting. The word, like, because we've adopted it in culture, maybe stolen it in the larger culture, oh, really? because it's actually a word that is in uh, historically, it's in African American vernacular. It is. Yeah, and and the greater part of culture has sort of stolen it. Okay. To well, be tell honest. me. I don't. I don't yeah. know this. What's the it's, history of the word? Yeah. I mean, it's just about being alert to injustice in society and just being aware of it. We've made it something of more a verb, like becoming aware of it Oh, okay. in, in sort of the last few years. It's historically been a, uh, maybe more of an adjective, I guess? To like describe to, a person? To be, woke. Oh, to be woke. But now woke is sort of like this thing that you become. Like we've used it as a verb, right? And it's, it is related to being aware of injustice in culture. Specifically, it used to be about race and African-American injustice. Now I think it's been expanded to more things, gender issues, just pop culture issues. Is it, yeah. is it still primary? I mean, now it's just kind of thrown around willy nilly and nobody even, cause I mean, I, yeah. you know, I kind of heard it a few times. I've spent a little bit of time thinking about it, yeah. but I never knew where it actually came from. Yeah. I actually read a bunch of articles um, of sort of African-American thought leaders going, can you stop using that word? Like that word, matters in history and culture has kind of taken it but we're going to use it here because it is a it is a in the common cultural speak right now yes but clearly even from this few moments of dialogue very few of us know what it actually means and oh it gets that's good. used yeah willy-nilly for whatever yeah yeah do okay. people that use the word will they use it like like you could go listen to a lecture and someone would talk about the oh yeah, of woke. Yeah, I think I think so. Interesting. So it's not like a, it's not common language. But it's to not your like, but to your point, if you push someone really hard to define it, I'm not sure there's a really clear definition. Again, let's just say at it's basic. Is it's being alert to <clears throat> injustice in society. Okay, so that's going to be our working. Definition. That's going to be our working definition. Alert to injustice in society. Yeah. So I want to talk about the idea and the modern understanding. Um, of woke or wokeness. I want to talk about it as it relates to the gospel, but you probably want to talk about it as it relates to culture because you're a culture guy. <laughs> probably. So we're, we'll start with culture yeah. and then go to the Bible. Yeah. Gospel. So just like, let's talk, let's talk about how you see the ramifications or the effect of, of this woke idea on culture. And I mean, as you're processing it, I probably, the first time I heard the word a number of years ago was in the relationship was in relationship to race discussions, and it was the first time I heard it. It was an African American leader using it, who's very thoughtful. It was not. 
I think a lot of times now it's used almost in slang and culture, and it's like you'd almost look it up in the Urban Dictionary and think there's going to be a... Yep. But it's it like, from what you're saying, it's almost been hijacked to that. Yep. And that's probably where most of us hear it, see it, experience it being used. But the first time was from a leader in the African-American community who was discussing racial injustice. So I'm aware of that. Um, I'm more concerned about how it's being used and how when you ask a person on the street what it is. And also probably the way the pendulum is swinging to you hear it used as anti. It's like you, there's a lot of people in our culture right now that are clamoring and using using it pejoratively, meaning yeah. like you're woke, mm -hmm. that's negative, when they don't even know what it means. And then also a movement underfoot in society to be anti-woke. Right. What's hard is when you use it pejoratively and you don't even know what it means, yeah. and then you're <laughs> anti-woke, what are you even anti? It's right. like you're anti what? And it's just being plastered on anything and everything. So for me, basically, I don't even want to use the term. Mm -hmm. And when someone says, either calls me woke or accuses me of being woke or is anti woke, I'm like, I, I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. So I'm not really sure we're even going to have a conversation about this because do you even know what you're talking about? Right. So there's a lot of name calling, pejorative, anti. Muddy, confusing, ask most people what it is and they don't even know. Yeah. So why are we doing this to each other and right. why is there well, movements underfoot about this? And something we talked about last week about cancel culture um, shows up in this woke conversation where it is completely based on us and them mentality, yeah. right? You either are or you aren't. You're either anti or you are for something. And again, to not even be able to define it, it's almost laughable mm -hmm. that you would put a, such a stake in the ground that you're anti something when you can't even define what exactly. what you are against. And this might be getting into the Christianity part of it, the gospel start of it, but it's like to be a follower of Christ and to be anti something smacks against most of what the Bible, like I'm not, oh. I'm, I should be known for what I'm for. for. Not what I'm against. You actually don't have to be anti anything. No. You could just be for totally something. for this. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, you know, moving it into that direction yeah. at some point yeah, that's when good. we when we when we need to, but I, I am concerned about the way it's being used and misused, and maybe we're not even talking about what matters. Because when we purely say the definition, which was what again, the working definition? Uh, uh, an awareness or an alertness to injustice in society. I mean, when you hear that at its basic nature, we who, better all fall into that category. If that's what it means to be woke, yeah, then I want to be woke. Yeah, right. We better work as hard as we can be to be alert to injustice in society. Absolutely. I think where some of it has gone sideways is um, we've put politics and we've put organizations into this mix, right? So I can actually be completely for something but not bleed and die for an organization that aligns yeah. with that. That's great. That's right? really true. The other piece of it I think that's interesting is because we don't know the labels we're putting on people and we're doing this us versus them, all alignment with organizations that I don't support, we're, we're doing all that. Because we're doing all that, we're doing damage and silencing and canceling and we're not having robust conversations to try to understand. So I don't even want to use these terms. Mm -hmm. It's like it, it makes me just go, I don't want to use the term mm -hmm. woke mm -hmm. because nobody knows what it means. And as a leader, I want to be someone that speaks clearly and is understood for what I'm saying, not what people think they hear I'm saying or are associated with. So interacting with a guy who who said I was woke, was like, you're so woke. And I'm like, I don't, I don't even know what you mean by that. And he didn't even know what he meant. And it's like, don't, what, what, what are you, ta don't label me. Yeah. It's not unlike the term right now, social justice. Mm -hmm. I don't know what people mean by that. Right. So I'm not going to use that phrase. Right. I'm going to talk about justice. I'm going to talk about biblical justice. Yeah, which we better be for. Social justice, to some degree, do we just scrap some words and go, mm -hmm. unless we slow down to go, we, when we say woke, we mean mm -hmm. we're for justice for everyone. In that way, I am woke. I want to be woke. But all the other ways someone projects on what they think that word means on me, mm -hmm. that's unfair and I don't even know what you're talking about. Right. Well, Joe, you're for social justice. Like, I don't know what you even mean. 
If you're asking me, am I for justice? A just society? Am I for biblical justice? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Am yeah. I for eliminating discrimination and mistreatment of people? Yes. If that makes me woke, I think it makes me Christian. Yeah. I, I mean, know. I think we've talked about this a bunch of times too on Real Talk. Is like, when you start defining words outside of the way even God defined, yeah. or when you start defining truth outside of the way God has mm -hmm. defined it, it basically means nothing because we all have our own definitions yes. of things. Yep. So it's like, if you want to talk about justice, let's actually come back to what justice means. And you can't have any frame of reference unless you think of the one who created justice, yes. who is at his core just. Yep. And that core of justice that's written throughout the whole Bible, if you put another word around it or other words around it, do whatever you want. I know what the Bible says. Yeah. And I'll die for what the Bible says about justice. Yeah. Label me whatever the heck you want. Yeah. That's so good. how does the whole woke thing work yeah. with the yeah, scriptures? Yeah. So turn it towards turn it towards the gospel. And what's happening is, um, you know, whatever my opinion, but there's a lot of um, pastors or or evangelicals out there that really want to get their articles read, so they title them, Is Jesus Woke? Uh, and things like that. Clickbait? And, yeah. And I'm like, shut up. Like, stop using Jesus as a pawn in, in whatever you're doing. Stop dropping him into politics as if he operates that way, or using him in one way to affirm what you want to believe on any side of anything. Yeah. Like, just just stop. And even the idea of, I, I read something where, where people were like, well, Jesus, you know, Jesus was woke or Jesus became woke, if you want to use that as a verb. It's like, no, no, Jesus is aware of every injustice for all time, right? Not just like, he all of a sudden goes, oh, I realize this injustice oh. is happening. No, 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 he's known from the beginning mm -hmm. of time all injustice and actually moved towards mm -hmm. people who have experienced injustice. Mm -hmm. And Jesus, while he was on earth, um, racism wasn't a thing really in, in his context, but xenophobia and nationalism yeah, yeah. was, nationalism. Mm -hmm. and he spoke right to it, mm -hmm. and his disciples and people who followed spoke right to it. So it's like, in a sense, the Bible has been aware of alert to injustice all along and has moved towards it to try mm -hmm. and resolve it. So I don't know, stop using Jesus in, in the whole, is Jesus or not, woke, is he woke or not, mm -hmm. as this political pawn, like it's gross. Yeah. And then looking at the Bible and seeing that God is for, you know, again, beginning to end, right? He's for the poor. Yeah. He's for the alien. Yeah. He's for the immigrant. He's for the oppressed. He's for those, neither Greek, nor Jew, nor slave, nor free, like women, men. He's for mm -hmm. people being treated with equity. And even our founding documents, the root of some of those founding documents is that we hold these things to be self-evident. Why? Because of what the Bible in a lot of ways teaches, yeah. that all men and women are created equal and should be able to pursue life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Like that's, that's just freedom that comes from knowing our Creator and wanting to ensure every person, every man, woman, and child is treated with justice and love and mercy. Mm -hmm. That doesn't change truth, mm -hmm. But at this basic level, is there anyone that shouldn't be treated with justice? Yeah. Anyone that should be maligned because of their orientation, ethnicity, gender, race, everyone should be treated freedom, freely and graciously because understanding that is saying, I believe God created this person. They are loved by God. God came to earth for every category and type of brokenness and person. Therefore, I'm going to treat everyone like that mm -hmm. with justice and kindness and mercy and truth and love. And God is going to sort out some of these struggles of distinction between sin and not sin. And I'm going to be an advocate for that. I'm not saying that. Mm -hmm. But it's like I don't have to defend God. Mm -hmm. And That's I don't good. have to, like, push an agenda. God will do what God's going to do. My job is to love people and treat them, I mean... Mike, we did this last week. Yeah, right? yeah. It's like, yeah, and maybe we got to where I was kind of thinking early. It's like even just this this term and this idea, I think you mentioned there is a movement among, I think, evangelicals to be like, we're going to be anti-woke for whatever we don't like about this idea. We're going to be anti It's like, rise above all of this. I mean, the, the problem with wokeness or honestly anti-wokeness is they, they deal in guilt. The currency of wokeness oh. is guilt. The message of Jesus Christ is repentance and forgiveness, mm -hmm. and that there, it, there is no condemnation in Christ. There's no such thing as yeah. guilt when we're in Christ. So it's like, 
rise above that. You want to be awakened to something. I mean, 2 Corinthians 4 talks about being awakened to the light of the gospel. Don't be anti-anything just before the gospel. Mm. Be awakened to that. And it's funny how that will work out everything you just talked about. That will work out biblical justice and alertness to things yep. that we want to be for. Yep. So is is this because, like, where where does the Christian anti-wokeness come from? Is it like, it like is there, I feel like it's driven by fear. It, yes. That's and exactly I'm, I'm what I was going to say. And I'm afraid we're losing ground in something, so we have to defend something. Yeah. Instead of going, no, I don't have to defend God. I can stand on the truth. I can want equality for people. Mm -hmm. And I can see ways generationally, you know, this will get labeled systemic injustice, right? So, but let me define what I mean by that. What I mean by that is clearly you see in the Bible that sins of the father get passed down from generation to generation to generation. So there's generational things that are happening. The Bible articulates this. Well, just a basic understanding, there's consequences to sin. Yes. So you see generationally things moving down the yeah, line. Yeah. And with that, of course, there's going to be ways that people are mistreated. And I mean, right, 400 years of slavery for the Jews, what was that? That was systemic slavery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Got passed down from generation to generation until God intervened and broke that apart and rescued that group of people, mm -hmm. right? And so I don't know why people some Christians can't see that there are generational things that happen that we should care about, mm -hmm. that we should intersect with and say, if something has happened generationally because an individual sinned, let's hold that individual accountable. But if our society has gotten into a motion of doing things because multiple people have contributed to it over and over and over and over again, we should stop and go, wait, this isn't right. Mm -hmm. We should do something about this. Let's stop this, let's change it. Let's move in a new direction to give people opportunities. So I've seen the sin of the father pass down from generation to generation in family life. Yeah. And I know the way that stopped is through an individual changing their lives. But that's hard when that's the only culture you've ever known and lived with. Mm -hmm. And how do you break out of it? Sometimes you need like God coming in from the outside to rescue the mm, people of good. Israel, yeah. sends in someone. And sometimes that's the people outside of the problem or the mm. or, or the uh, system that intervene to help because they realize this is wrong we can do something about it let's bring about change and justice mm -hmm. uh, please on our comment section don't label me something mm -hmm. without understanding what i mean by it and sitting down and having a conversation or don't label me woke don't label me whatever it is it's like i just want the sins of the father that are passed down from generation to generation to generation to individually be repented of but how does that happen when other people don't bring good news and opportunity and salvation into that from outside of that system to challenge and encourage justice and goodness and love and light? It needs sometimes outside people to see it and recognize it and go, hey, this is wrong. Let's help. Mm -hmm. Let's be merciful. Mm -hmm. Let's do something about it. And, and continue. I'm all As you're saying that, I'm just continuing to hear, knocking down the language of us and them. Yeah. Like, Jesus carried all of humanity to the cross, not just us. Mm -hmm. Like, keep knocking that stuff down. Which is an individual responsibility for us as individuals. Absolutely. And it is a group responsibility a collect yeah. where we collectively say we're going to work towards this together mm -hmm. and not just say, well, I'm going to make sure my life and my family are okay. Whatever happens to the next family and the next group of people, that's not my problem. That's good. Like, I don't think that's the way the kingdom of God works. Yeah, right. Good talk. Let's wake up. Let's woke up. You ready for summer break? I think we're ready oh, yeah. for summer break. Let's get, uh, next time we see everybody, we're gonna be tan. Oh, good. We're gonna wear our beach attire on camera. Bring our boogie boards. Something to look forward to. Yeah, that is. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out with us. See you next time.